Good afternoon, residents of Palm Beach County. My name is Mac Bernard, uh, the mayor for Palm Beach County. In Palm Beach County, we have over 1.5 million residents uh, who are dealing with this dangerous hurricane, Dorian. And we want to thank all of our residents in the county that's been making all of their preparation for this storm. And so right now what we want to do is to give an update uh, from all of our different departments so in that way uh, the residents and everyone are aware of what's going on in the county. I want to thank my fellow commissioners who are also here, uh, Commissioner Greg Weiss, uh, Commissioner Robert Weinroth, Commissioner Mary Lou Berger who is here, and then we have other dignitaries who are here also who are also going to speak. Uh, the first person that's going to come up is going to be our county administrator, Virginia Baker, who's going to give an update. Thank you, Mayor. Good afternoon. Palm Beach County is under a tropical storm warning, which means tropical storm force winds are expected within 36 hours. Most of our area is also under a hurricane watch, which means hurricane force conditions are possible within the next 48 hours. As a result, mandatory evacuations have been ordered for residential structures in zone A, and B, effective at 1 p.m. today. Zone A includes mobile homes, substandard housing, and low-lying areas prone to water intrusion. Zone B generally includes the barrier islands, lands, areas north and south of the Jupiter Inlet, and other surge vulnerable areas south along the intracoastal waterway to Broward County line. If you choose not to evacuate to a shelter, please evacuate miles, not hundreds of miles. We encourage you to stay within the county to um, shelter in place. Palm Beach County overall, uh, the large portion of Palm Beach County is in a high area and so therefore it is not necessary for people to evacuate. So please, please shelter in place. This avoids you getting captured out on I-95 and other traffic and the turnpike. You're safer here in our county. As we know that uh, Hurricane Dorian is very unpredictable and so we strongly recommend if you are going to evacuate the county, we recommend that you not go north because the storm is going to be heading north. So if you go south or you go further west to uh, other counties outside of Palm Beach, uh, that we would recommend, but definitely not to go north. Um, in addition, uh, we want you to determine where your home is located. If you don't know your evacuation zone, please go to readypbc.com or download our free app, PBC Dart, and that will assist you in locating your evacuation zone. At 1 p.m. today, the county opened up seven of the 15 general population shelters in the county, as well as a special needs shelter located at the South Florida Fairgrounds and a pet friendly shelter at West Boynton uh, Recreation Center. The seven general population shelters currently open are uh, Dr. Mary McLeod Bethune Elementary, Independence Middle School, Lake Shore Middle School, Pahokee Middle School, Palm Beach Gardens High School, Palm Beach Central High School, and Park Vista High School. We will continue to evaluate the need to add additional shelters, and we will make those decisions and push it out to the public when that occurs. The special needs shelters uh, is located at 9067 Southern Boulevard, West Palm Beach. If you are registered, you should have received notification from the shelter people already. If you are not registered, you need to go online, download the application, fill it out, and send it in, or bring it with you if you come to the shelter, uh, special needs shelter. That will assist staff in evaluating your needs. Uh, furthermore, people with special needs should register for a special needs program by calling 561-712-6400. Or as I stated earlier, visit the website, which is www.readypbc.org. And of course, we could not leave out our pets. 
So our pet friendly shelter is located at 6000 North Tree Boulevard, Lake Worth. That this shelter is available to Palm Beach County residents uh, residing in mandatory evacuation zones or in mobile homes. So please bring proof of residency and we'll assist you at that time. The available space for each person at our gen general shelter is 20 square feet. Please govern yourselves accordingly. Uh, we want to accommodate as many residents as we can possibly accommodate, so the space is limited. Please bring your snacks to the shelter. Make sure you bring your medicine to our general shelter as well, and only dinner will be served this evening. So please govern yourselves accordingly. The Sheriff's Office is assuring everyone that immigration status will not be checked for any person coming to the shelter. So please do not allow that to deter you from coming uh, to the shelter. Two shelters, as I stated earlier, are open in the Glades area um, and make sure it is not mandatory that you must evacuate in Zone L, which is located in the Glades area. However, if you live in substandard housing or mobile homes, please utilize the shelter. Palm Tram. Palm Tram will transport homeless individuals from John Prince Park, Phil Foster Park, Jim Berry Park, and Curry Park at 3 p.m. and 7 p.m. today to the appropriate shelters. They will transport from the park to the closest shelter again. The bus will pick up individuals at the following locations. Uh, for John Prince, it will be at the Commodore Pavilion. At Phil Foster, it will be next to the bridge. At Jim Berry, it will be in the car loop. At Curry Park, it will be next to the first pavilion. We are strongly encouraging individuals to get on the bus today. If winds are strong above 45 miles per hour tomorrow, we will not transport. The buses will come off the road at that speed. I also want to remind you that if you are in need of serious health care, you should go to your doctor or your hospital uh, to get further direction. Because once the winds reach 45 miles per hour, fire rescue cannot come out. So I want to be really clear on that. They will not and cannot respond when the winds get up to 45 miles per hour. Uh, that is to keep you safe and to also keep our first responders safe as well. If you decide to go to a hurricane shelter, please bring three, at least three days of supply of water, two changes of comfortable clothing, flashlight with extra batteries, a cell phone and battery operated charger, medications and prescriptions, snacks, special diet food, cash, photos of uh, valuable documents that you want to keep on you, uh, games, books, playing cards for entertainment during your stay. Space is limited, so again, govern yourselves accordingly. And most of all, weapons are prohibited. Uh, bridges. Bridges to the Barrier Islands will go into lockdown this evening at 8 p.m. Span will not open for any boat traffic after that time. On Tuesday, uh, county government facilities will be closed. Thank you. <clears throat> Next, we're going to have Dr. Donald Flanoy to give an update from the school district. Thank you. Good afternoon. At this time, um, I just want to state for the community that schools are still closed on Tuesday. Uh, we have yet to make any decisions about Wednesday. As you know, the unpredictability of the storm, we're taking this hour by hour. But I also want to send out a message to all of the employees and volunteers that will be uh, working at our shelters. As more decisions are made from this particular group, the, this, this executive policy group, please um, get yourselves ready. Um, contact your managers for, the, for when those calls are made for deployment, if and when the county decides to open more shelters. But at this time, the shelters that have been activated, we're ready to go. And we want to thank everyone in the community. We want to thank this group. We want to thank the sheriff and everyone who is helping us navigate this very trying time. And I just ask that everyone 
and keep our kids safe. Um, this is a good time for kids to be reading, um, you know, because <laughs> uh, we, at some point we're going to get back to school and get back to our daily lives. But again, right now, I want everyone to just be safe. And for all of our employees that will be reporting to shelters as the calls come out, please respond accordingly. Thank you. Well, when it comes from Dr. Donald Fanoy, my kids will listen. So please, my kids, please read. <laughs> uh, we want to bring uh, Dr. Alina Alonso to give an update from the healthcare district. Health department. Health department. Health department. Okay. Um, good afternoon again. Um, Administrator um, Ms. Baker did a great job announcing everything that we need. I'm just going to emphasize a little bit in terms of the special needs shelter. Um, those clients that have registered, make sure you bring your electrical equipment, such as your concentrators. Make sure you bring all your medicine, put it all together. Um, wait patiently for Palm Tram if you're waiting for them to pick you up. Uh, have everything ready so when they come to pick you up, you can go quickly into the bus and then be dropped off. Um, and make sure also that you bring any special diet food that you have. She mentioned that, but just remember uh, the mass feeding um, may not be your favorite food, so if you want to bring something special, bring it with you. Um, um, those who are not registered, even if you take down that uh, form that has to be filled, you will be triaged by a separate line at the facility to determine whether or not you can come into the shelter, okay? So that has to be done um, there on the facility. So that's it. Stay safe. Um, stay alert with all the alerts because things can change very quickly. So you've got to stay alert and listen to the advisories. Thank you. <coughs> Next, we're going to bring our state attorney, Dave Ehrenberg, to give an update. All right. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I'm Dave Ehrenberg, state attorney for Palm Beach County. Just with a few announcements. First, the courthouses will be closed on Tuesday. That's as per the order of Chief Judge Krista Marks. Plus, the State Attorney's Office and the Public Defender's Offices will also be closed on Tuesday. Uh, you heard from uh, Ms. Baker say that there are nine total shelters that are now operational as of 1 p.m. That includes a special needs shelter and a pet-friendly shelter. Please keep in mind that they are all first come, first serve. And so if you are a pet owner, please make sure you take care of your four-legged family members. Back in Hurricane Irma, we had several pets that were left outside, tethered to trees and other places, and otherwise neglected. Animal cruelty laws are still in effect, even during a state of emergency like this one. Plus, many localities have anti-tethering ordinances. So let's please take care of each other and take care of our pets. Um, the sheriff will come up and talk about the shelters and the prohibition against weapons and other matters, and I'll leave that up to him. But I'll, I'll finish by saying that since we're still in a state of emergency, anti-price gouging laws are also in effect. That's when an essential commodity like food, water, gas, hotel rooms, that when their price is jacked up way higher than the average price. That's price gouging. If you see that, report it to the anti-price gouging hotline, and that is 1-866-9-NO-SCAM, 1-866-9-NO-SCAM. I'm honored to be part of this group of hardworking public servants working to keep us all safe. Thank you. And next we'll have an update from our Sheriff Department, Sheriff Rick Bradshaw. Thank you. Okay, let's talk about the shelters just a little bit more. First of all, when you come to the shelters, realize that your bags are subject to search, all right? So if you have a concealed weapons permit, either leave it in your car, lock it up, or leave it at home and lock it up. You can't come into the shelters with a firearm, all right, or any weapons that are going to be considered that's going to be danger to the people that are in the, sh in the shelters. If you're going to bring medicine, Bring it in the bottles with the prescription label on it. Don't show up with a little baggie full of a whole bunch of assorted pills. That's not going to work. All right? Bring the prescription bottle with your name and the prescription on it. Okay? So remember, there's going to be a limited amount of space in there. You've got your own little, like, cubicle area, you know, number of square feet. So be courteous of the person next to you. Realize that you're going to be in there for a while. 
Sometimes people's tempers and patience gets a little heated, but you know, we're all in this together, so realize that. The second thing is, constant reminder, you're going to hear from me about this every single news conference. The roads are not going to be good. There's going to be some flooding. The winds will be up a little bit. But the main thing is, if we lose some power, the lights are going to be out. So, don't be out driving around during the storm. Stay inside afterwards until we get the all clear so the emergency responders can do what they need to do. All right? Four-way stops. If the traffic light is out, it's a four-way stop. Be courteous. Let the other person go when it's clear. Proceed across there. But stay out of these areas that are flooded. We don't want to have to be sending somebody to rescue out of a canal because you didn't know where the canal started and the road started. And finally, let me tell you this. The, the fire department has their guidelines on when they come off the road. We just heard that. I don't want there to be some misunderstanding out here with the bad guys saying, well, geez, the, the sheriff's office is off the road when the winds get up. We're out there a lot longer than you think so, folks. So don't think you're going to come out here just because the wind's blowing a little bit and you're going to be doing some things that aren't right. We're going to be out here protecting the neighborhoods, protecting the businesses to make sure that they're going to be safe during that storm and after the storm. All right? Everybody get what they need to get here and keep an eye on this thing. And remember, we're here for you. Well, this is one of, the, one of the most unpredictable storms that the state of Florida has ever faced and that we're experiencing in Palm Beach County. Uh, what I can tell you is that in Palm Beach County, we prepare for storms like this, and we prepare for before the storm, during the storm, and after the storm. Our whole team is here, our full staff, and everybody's ready, so in that way we can protect the life of all of our residents in the county. So now we'll open it up for questions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, and maybe Ms. Baker, you may want to speak to the matter with respect to evacuations. A decision was made, the, um, the red zones and the orange zones, and at which point would you all assess as to when maybe western portions may need to evacuate or maybe um, structures east of 95 is our consideration there at all? What I can tell you is that we're monitoring it basically hour by hour in terms of making the decision. Initially we were going to look at zone A but then we're like we had to add zone B and then this storm as it's been it's been you know changing so we may have to add additional zones but our whole team our staff are monitoring it and we're speaking to FEMA the National Weather Services so in that way we're ready to make whatever decisions that we need to make but we're prepared to even with the shelters that we've opened up if we need to open up additional shelters we'll also do that also might there be a possibility of additional mandatory evacuations I'll let Bill Johnson answer that who's our emergency operations director Good afternoon. Thank you. The, we have, as, as the mayor mentioned, we're in constant contact with the National Hurricane Center, the National Weather Service, and uh, flood control districts and, and whatever. We make evacuation orders based on storm surge. And based on the forecasted storm surge, uh, we chose to move those two zones, zone A and zone B, which you'll see on the board there. Uh, at this time, um, we've, the information we're receiving from the National Hurricane Center is that that is a, a correct uh, and adequate uh, order. So, a question for, um, for the sheriff. Uh, Within the Hispanic community, there's a lot of uh, fear regarding the migration status when entering uh, a shelter. Can you be emphatic on the policy regarding that, please? Yeah, and, and Administrator Baker touched on that earlier. We're not there to check immigration status. We want you to feel comfortable about bringing yourself or your family to any shelter here in Palm Beach County that's open. If you're in an evacuation area, you bring your family, yourself, to those shelters. We're not there to check to see what your status here is in the U.S. We're there to protect you. So don't be concerned about that in the slightest. Sheriff, and just you, you touched on it a moment ago. We understand yeah. first responders, mm -hmm. medics won't go out north of 45 miles an hour. Your deputies will, though, is that right? We don't tell you when we'll be sheltering up, at what point, uh, for obvious reasons. Uh, you know, years back, that information came out, and literally some people went out and tried to start breaking in buildings when the wind got to a certain speed. We're going to be out there a lot longer than you think. And I just want to add to it, you know, we have such a huge immigrant population in the county. And so, you know, when we've opened up the shelters, it is for every resident because we want to save the life of every resident in the county. Any further questions? Does the same apply for the pet shelter? 
Yes, it's, a, it's a, the same thing applies for the pet shelter, the, the special needs shelter at the fairground. So this is open for the residents, and we want residents to shelter in place. But if you can't shelter in place, you need to come to one of the shelters. We're not looking at anybody's uh, status at all in the county because we want everybody to be safe. Can I just get a little more clarification on the glades? Because, you know, that was a big concern in one of the last storms. I know the track was quite different, but, you know, that's always a vulnerable area because of the Okeechobee. What we, were, what we would do is I would bring Bill Johnson. I think we also have uh, Army Corps. the Army Corps who's also here because we've been tracking that because that's Zone L. And so we've been monitoring it very closely. So now we, we can make the decision on whether we were going to make a mandatory evacuation for Zone L. So we'll have the Army Corps police come and speak on that. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, sir. Hey, good afternoon. I'm uh, Lieutenant Colonel Todd Polk. I'm the Deputy District Commander for the Jacksonville District. In, in the bottom line, on, on Lake Okeechobee and the Hubert Hoover Dyke, we have we have no concerns with this uh, with this integrity or the strength of dike holding, uh, given all the scenarios that we're looking at um, for all the categories of a storm that may are inside the cone that may possibly cross if it does. But at this time, given our current lake levels, we don't have any concerns about the uh, the dike's integrity. And Lieutenant, were there releases in advance? Deliberately, because of this. No, currently we we made we're gonna make sure that all the drawdown of the basin have been, have continued to flow out, and and, and thus we've not uh, released uh, from the lake part. Thank you. And so what we also did was we opened up two shelters out in the glades because of the fact that we have some of the mobile homes and some of the substandard housing out there. So in that way, those residents can evacuate, but it's not mandatory. But there's nothing. Um, contemplated like in that one storm where you actually had palm tram buses out there and brought people? We're prepared if we need to make any, any additional decision, but right now we have no plans to do that because we've been communicating with the Army Corps, and so we feel confident that we won't need to do a mandatory evacuation for Zone L. Mayor, those two shelters in the Blades area, those are part of the nine, correct? Yes, they are. They are part of the nine. We have seven on the eastern part of the county, and then, well, well, we have... Let me make sure. Yes, yeah, seven general right. and then two Excuse special that. needs and with the pet shelter, sir. No, only one special one needs. One special and needs one and then one pet shelter. <laughs> we got to keep you straight. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Any other further questions? Thank you very much for, thank you very much.